In the not too distant future, next Sunday, AD, there was a guy named Joel, not too different from you or me. He worked at Gizmonic Institute, just another face in a red jumpsuit. He did a good job cleaning up the place, but his bosses didn't like him, so they shot him in the space. This is going to be it. This is my year. You say that every year we go to the Mad Scientist Convention. Ah, but this year is different. They laughed when I made the more painful mouse trap, but my entrance into the Mad Scientist competition is going to make me famous. Infamous. Ah, oh, that too, that too. Hey, promise me if you lose the contest this year, you're not going to blow up the whole convention center again. I only did that once. Oh, huh. Huh. Okay, twice. Twice. It was twice. Three times. The third time I used the incendiaries and it didn't actually make the building blow up. It just made it burn really quickly. God, that was beautiful, wasn't it? Okay, I'll give you that. Oh, it's time to call Joel now. The experiment has to start. Right, right, I know that. Come in, Jolene, you free floating space ferret. Well, sirs, I'm ready for this week's invention exchange. You know how they have airbags for cars? But they haven't invented anything yet for us motorcyclists. So I came up with this, the airbag helmet. What do you think? Oh, great. Get Ralph Nader on the phone. And then call Gary Busey. Is it our turn now? Yes. OK, this is our invention for this week. It's called the Chalk Man. Yes, we're entering this in the Mad Scientist competition this year. Oh, we have other choices, but this is the one we're going with. This is very strong. All right, OK, you're throwing a party. It's 3 a.m. and none of the guests are leaving. That's when you bring out the chalk man. Yes, as every self-respecting scientist knows, the sound of human fingernails on a chalkboard is most annoying. It initiates the primal fear response in all mammals, much like a chimpanzee scurrying across the plains of the Serengeti in fear. Simply put your chalk man on the platen. Now, oh, this is a real chalkboard. And side B. Side B, excellent. And just, you'll notice the Tone arm has real human fingernails embedded in the hand. Now place it on the platen. Oh, open it. They'll stay. Close it. They leave. Open it. They'll stay. Close it. They'll leave. Open it. Stay. And so on and so on and so on. Well, what do you think of that, Joel Meister? Wow, it's really annoying. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so uh, what's this week's experiment? It's called the robot versus the Aztec mummy, and it's almost as annoying as this chalk man here. <laughs> yes, but first we're going to scour your palate with a little cinematic science fiction sorbet. It's an old serial called Commando Cody and the Rocket Men from the Moon. Uh, be careful, Larry. I've installed a new security system here in Deep 13, so uh, be careful which buttons you push on the panel. Oh, right? Anita, okay, how does it work? Oh, well, uh, stand over there on that mark and uh, pretend you're from accounting. Okay. You mean this mark here? Yes. Oh, look. Hmm, uh, interesting. Uh, uh, here, here's your movie, Joel. Movie sign! Too heavy. A Republic cereal. Yeah. You ever heard of cereals before? Yeah, light oat. Oh, look, it's Pumpkin Boy. 
No, it's not that kind of cereal. So it means a... Uh, oh, is a, a wheat thing? No, a movie that's in series. What? Oh, you'll catch on. It's not a whole movie. Why would someone go and see part of a movie? Uh, I don't know. There's always a boring short. Yeah. My shorts are never boring. Thank you, Tom. Is the music always this poor at cereals? <laughs> yes. I think I may get it then. He's the heavy. You can tell when the music swells up. All right. I guess that's the end of chapter one. Oklahoma, 1934. The oil fields are ablaze. Oh. Hey, look, there's a sale at Penny's. Big stuff blowing up everywhere. Maybe it's a fire sale. <laughs> New petition against tax law. The continued wave of death-dealing explosions struck yesterday at Area Defense Headquarters. As in previous occasions, the authorities are unable to detect the cause of these blasts, which have done Who's untold damage. that guy mixing damage. drinks? Uh, Professor Tom this? Collins. Well, there are several theories, Joan. But so far, no one is even sure what kind of explosives are being used or how they're set off. Maybe Mr. Henderson will have some information for us when he gets in from Washington. That guy Henderson wouldn't tell you what time it is. Just what is his job, anyway? He, he doesn't have a watch. Detail, but it's a big one. He only answers to a few people in this country of ours. I think that... And they're all named Sue. Hello, Mr. Henderson. Hello, Commander What Cody. time is it? Ted, Miss Gilbert. How are you getting along with the rocket ship? As well as can be expected, sir. Our tests with the model are satisfactory. If the government will let us make a few test flights with the rocket... It's itself. out of the question. This whole project strictly top secret. Since you people developed the rocket ship for us, and we'll be the ones operating it, it has been decided that you should know more of our plans. Gee, nice I've been head. authorized to tell you this much. Its primary use will be to combat this wave of sabotage and destruction of our defense system. Duh. You mean the government knows what's causing it? Yeah, they Not read the papers too. But tests of the wreckage show that the explosions are of atomic origin. You mean someone's dropping atomic bombs on us? Not bombs. No planes have been observed, and the explosions aren't severe enough. No, from what I've learned of the nature of the blast, they seem more like an atomic ray of some kind. Of course, that's just a guess. It's the same guess that we've made, because it's the only possible answer. But no one has ever been able to make an atomic ray machine. You mean no one on Earth ever has? Who? Hmm? Say, this rocket we're building will be able to fly to the moon. Maybe someone up there has built one that could get down here. We believe that possible. And for some time, our astronomers have been noticing an unusual amount of atomic activity on the moon. Isn't any atomic amount of atomic activity, activity, on, the activity on the moon unusual? Atomic blasts on the Earth. The two known facts fit together. Yes, that's up. Like a so grocery bill. that's why you want us to fly to the moon. Yes. And when you get to the moon, find out if these attacks are actually coming from there. And bring back some cheese. some plan for stopping them. In the meantime, we'll do what we can with these attacks here. Is your flying suit still working? No, it needs to yes. be let out. We may ask you to use it. If a ray gun is being used to cause these blasts, it's probably being operated from the ground. And if you could get to the scene of the attack soon enough, you might be able to find some clue to the attackers. I'll be glad to try. Good. Or if we find out what time it is. Information about another attack. All right, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye. It's a train, all right. Whoa. Feels good, don't it? it. Nice shooting, pass. Lionel. That troop train be along Thanks, soon. Tycho. All right, I'll get out there right away. So give me a hand with the flying suit, Ted. You're going to wear that tie to fly in? blasted out in the west end of the valley. A rancher reported he saw a truck parked on a hill. Overlooking the tracks with two men in it, working some kind of a gun. They pulled out right after the wreck and headed toward Kern Hills. 
Henderson's office gave me a description of the truck, so I'm going out to look for it. I suppose you'll be wanting this. Yes, and yes. I'll take the gun, too. I may need it. Good luck, pumpkin boy. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. Window! Hey, look Hello, look window! window. Hey. Boy, that was close. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are cruising at approximately 50 feet. The captain has turned off the no screaming sign, and we just emptied the washroom. Looks like an atomic nose hair clipper. Why do they hate trains so much? Uh, it's not so much that they hate trains, they hate what they stand for. Oh, okay. that clears everything up. Whoa. Going down. Jane, stop this crazy thing! I think he's got to take a leak. Luckily, they won't see him. He was cleverly disguised as a Hershey's kiss. I think he's just drawn attention to himself. <laughs> Why don't they shoot him with the ray gun? Well, because even back then in the movies, uh, even the crooks had a sense of fair play, Tom Servo. Okay, uh, it's a serial, Joel, yeah. not a movie. Right. A serial. Let's get out of here. Stupid. Leave the ray gun? What else can we do? Well, you could take the truck. Nah. Well, much better to run in the desert on foot with no provisions or anything. You can eat your gun. <laughs> hey, it matches my helmet and everything. All I need is a Sparkmaster playset. I'm done. The loss of the ray gun is not too serious. I brought sufficient equipment from the moon to build several of them. But I do not care to have the Earth people learn the secrets of our weapons. From the description you gave me of your attacker's costume, it must have been Commando Cody in his flying suit. Or trash can head. He will probably take our ray gun to his laboratory for examination. So you must go there at once and recover the atomic chamber from the ray gun. That's a large order, Krog. We hired out to work your ray gun. This business of You were hired to do anything that I may consider necessary to pave the way for our invasion from the moon. You're being well paid for your work, so do as you're ordered. Yeah, well okay. paid, but in moon rocks, maybe we can afford one of your suits. Hey, this looks like the right door. Is working on this gun going to hold up finishing the rocket ship? Maybe. No. I'll just give it a quick examination and then turn it over to the authorities. We'll still be able to take off for the moon next Wednesday. Oh, I hate to shoot a butt like that. <laughs> Take it easy and you won't get hurt. Move back. That's exactly what my aerobics instructor said. Grab it. Yeehaw! Good thing scientists are such good fighters. Yeah, scientists versus tired thugs. Geeks and thugs. You gotta love it. Boy, they're using a lot of breakaway chairs. Oh, I thought that was a loose stool. And this is for Louis Pasteur. Nice fall. Excuse me, may I cut in? Another blow for science. One, two, three strikes. You're out of there. Routine 27. And don't try to follow us. Tell your friends. Hey, they left the ray gun. Yeah, but they took the batteries.
I didn't know Jackie Gleason was in this. <laughs> They're in the middle of a giant chess game. Hmm, fresh ground pepper? Calling Reddick. Looks like a pepper mill. You see? Yeah, yeah I get it. Mm -hmm. I'm laughing okay. hard inside. Come in, Krog. A rocket ship is leaving here in five days to investigate our moon. I did not believe the Earthmen possessed a ship capable of making the journey. I just learned about it myself, but I'm sure my information is correct. Stop Very talking well, into a shoe buffer. We will be prepared to take he looks care like Willard Scott. And don't forget the cheese. And speaking of cheese... Oh, how I love him. They're gonna launch from a miniature golf course? Be fine if they clear the windmill. trip for a woman. Now don't start that again. You'll be very glad to have someone along who can cook your meals. I'll say we will. Don't give her any Yeah, and pretty soon I'll be able to vote. I like to eat too. Nice ensemble anyway. Are the dicks coming with us? Uh, no. We, we call them police officers now, dear. Oh, I didn't know. I can't even vote. That's it. Well, the best of luck to all of you, sir. Hope this thing works all right. So do we. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. We'll just wait back here where it's safe by the thrusters. Hiya, folks. Hello, Hank. All set? All warmed up. We can take off right now. That is, if the ship will stand up to the test we made with the model. I think it will. Now, let's go. Safety belts fastened? They're sitting in office chairs. Fire pilot jets. Make sure you have your staples. Lean back to simulate G-forces. Everyone. Good. In case of an emergency, your office chair becomes a flotation device. Here, file this. I'm going to the washroom. Here, sit in my seat. I want to play with your stuff. Hey, triple word score. Hey, is this a contraction? You can't hyphenate. You know, I could make it in half the time if I had a straight edge. Sure is sunny in space. We're just about here. Halfway on the compass. Looks like we're on the right track. We ought to be down in another two hours. Hope they have a Hojo's. There's a city just ahead. Where do we sit down? Let's take her back in those hills where we can find a place to hide the ship. Then I'll fly over the city in the rocket suit. Okay. Yeah, a guy in a leather jacket with his butt on fire. They'll never notice that. <laughs> Set her down in that canyon. Shouldn't we land the ship first? Okay. Hey, the moon looks just like Arizona, you guys. Does it really? No. Well, you should know. Here, let me help you down. Cut. Oh. Edit. 
One small step for man, one giant leap for I. Must go through a lot of pants. Hey, it's either ancient Greece or Vegas. Caesar's world. Oh. Well, this looks to be a wall. I'll go this way. You are going in the right direction, Earthman. How'd they know my Get name? Enter the first door you come to. Turn Bob the Barker. control. The door will open. On the moon, they get the go creeps inside. out. It's okay. Go on. Excuse me. First floor, lingerie, ready to wear, notions, two pays. Moon man. Three pays. <laughs> I am Oricon. This is my brother Xenon and my other brother Xenon. Welcome, Commando Cody. I am Retic, ruler of the moon. Apparently, you are expecting me. Of course. For many years, our radio has kept us informed of events on Earth. And my men there have advised me of your every move. I've loved you from you afar. That our language. Yes. All our people are required to speak English. So we can operate more efficiently in your country. And wear underwear on our heads. Mind telling me why your men are carrying out that campaign of destruction on Earth? It's an election After year. Oh, they are merely softening up your defenses for our impending invasion. Why do you want to invade the Earth? Because the atmosphere on the moon has become so thin and dry, it is impossible for us to raise food except in pressurized greenhouses. Get a None humidifier. Of us can move outside without helmets. So we are planning a mass migration to your world. To find that conquering the Earth isn't so simple. Unless you bring oh, trees. will be. Because of our atomic weapons. On the moon, we have an element, lunarium, which is far superior to uranium as a base for atomic reactions. And we can completely control the force of these reactions enabling us to build atomic weapons ranging from huge cannon to these small ray pistols. Wish we had one of them doomsday machines. It's very considerate of you to give me all this information. You deserve some reward for your long journey, but unfortunately, I cannot permit you to return to Earth with it. Maybe what, I lovely have parting gifts? About that. Eat lead, Space Pansy. Oh, I thought that was a smoke detector. So much for the effectiveness of your weapons. Now I will demonstrate one of ours. Boredom? Not the pepper mill. You can see they're a more advanced civilization. Their furniture doesn't break. Oh, oh, okay. Well, it tips over, but it doesn't break. Wait, hold still. Wait, wait. No, not him. I love him. Oh. Him? Oh. <laughs> Which one? No, not him. No, that would be wrong. I've got to shoot someone. Oh, no. One of my favorites. That was my aunt's face. Well, we better get Don't out of here. Okay. Me. I can't stand it. Ooh. I can't so, stand you're it. Getting too heavy for this. Oh, I 
think I know what's wrong. Camba, follow me over here. Look at them. They're a bunch of, seem like a bunch of demon dogs or what something. What are demon dogs? Well, they're like chihuahuas, but without any flesh. And it looks like they're covering the ship. Follow oh. me back. We got a couple problems, Joe. What are they, Crow? Well, first, uh, they're covering the ship. They're going to weigh us down. Our orbit's going to start to decay, and we'll enter Earth's atmosphere. We're going to burn up. Crispy oh. critter time. What, what's number two? Well, as puppies go, with no flesh, they got like zero cuddle factor. All right, we got to get them off the ship. That's all there is to it. I need a man, a volunteer, somebody to go out there and shoo them off. Oh, I think the choice is obvious. Who's got the mighty voice that dogs can't say no to? Uh, Lauren Green? Yeah, I was thinking about that. I said, who's got the mighty voice who dogs can't... You do, Tom, sir. All right, okay. Who's wicked awesome? Uh, the Clack? Devo. Who's the human who can't breathe in space to get dogs off their ship? Right, I can't, Tom Servo. All right, oh, okay, man. who's bad? Tom, Tom Servo. Servo. Who's bad? Tom, Tom Servo. Servo. That's right, I'm bad. Now give me a rolled up newspaper and don't bother to shut the door. I'll be right back. Keep my dinner warm. Boy, I'm glad he's going out there, Joel. I can't even look at a place that played a spare ribs without getting woozy. Yeah, don't worry about a curl. Let's just watch the monitor and see what happens. Okay, puppy party's over. Everybody off. This is Tom Servo, your worst doggy nightmare. Don't get me mad. I don't think you'd like me when I'm mad. Oh, wait, stop it. Put your legs down. Oh, icky caca. Oh, let me in. Oh, jeez. Next time, I'll rub your faces in it. Oh, oh. Tom, Servo, what happened? Well, Joel, there's only one way to put it. They disgraced themselves on me. I feel so dirty. Hasn't oh. affected your looks, any. Oh. Yuck, gives me the willies. Oh, why would anyone want to do that to lovable old me, Tom Servo? <laughs> well, Tom, listen, there's been something I've been dreading telling you since the date of your creation. When you were still on the drawing board, I based your plans on a fire hydrant. Oh, man, you can look me in the bubble and tell me that? I'm a public utility. <laughs> it's over. I'm going to go hose off. <laughs> okay. How do we get rid of those demon dogs? I don't know. This is the feature presentation. Castaneda, I didn't know this was going to be a musical. Jorge Mondragon, he must be playing the monster. No, I, it's the mummy. Robot? Yay! Versus the Aztec mummy? Boo! Alfred Salazar, he's a boxer, isn't he? Garcia de Leon, Fountain of Youth guy? I do think Jose Laiho is the inventor of that uh, cream sandwich, though. Oh, okay. The Laiho. When in Mexico, visit Calesa Studios. But don't drink the water. This movie is the producer's answer to Montezuma's revenge. When in Coral Gables, Florida, visit Sound Lab Inc. and visit our glass bottom boats. When in San Fernando, visit Manuel. And tickle his belly. Tickle his belly. He'll shake his leg for you. Nice title card painting, don't you think? Yeah. What is that? Kind of a mummy? Mom must have, mummy. Must have taken minutes. Mr. Mummy. How far can the human mind penetrate the mysteries of the great beyond? 13 Who feet, knows? 4 inches, 1920 this Olympics. Is based upon an extraordinary experiment. Carried out by Doctors Hughes and Tooney, Tooney. of the University ooh, ooh, of Francis. Los Angeles. Ooh. There is no doubt as to its authenticity. Except for our own doubts. of people participating in the experiment, sworn to by a notary public, preclude the possibility of any fraud. This picture is a combination of factual data mixed with fiction. Sort of like the Iran-Contra affair. Mexico, this is the city. My name is Friday. I carry a badge. I don't need no stinking badge. This is a real car. The people, however, are fictional. Their acting, however, is bad. Real, real bad. bad. Real slow, too. These are two guys with hats. I'm coming. Just a minute. Hold on to your shorts. I'm coming. My legs are old, my teeth are gray. Don't leave. I'm coming. Good evening. 
Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Dr. Good evening. Diaz, Dr. Esther, what a pleasure to have you Dr. here. Dr. Kildare, Dr. Scholl, Dr. Pepper. I hope you're feeling well. Very well, thank you. And you? The same old laborers, always working. Trying to find new ways to help patients die painlessly. Funny. Please don't choke. But won't you come in? My husband is in there waiting for you. Uh, I'm home this evening. It's no trouble, Doctor. We're delighted. Who'd complain? At having the opportunity of visiting with such a beautiful young lady as your wife, Flora. Flatterer. Isn't How that are you Floyd thinking? the Barber? Fine, Doctor. Please sit down, gentlemen. Thank you. Hey, not everybody sit with their spread out. Come on. Oh, Floyd Diaz. gets the comfy chair. Esther, I've taken the liberty of calling you here because I think it's time I revealed something very serious. Let's hear it then. My underwear is 100 years old. It's about the Aztec breastplate and the bracelet, gentlemen. How's that? I put them on at night Why, and the dance. the whole thing was forgotten long ago. It's a closed book, Doctor. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I thought, too. But things have happened lately that I think you two should know about. My friends, be patient and allow me to tell you a story. We can't. Although you already know part of the history, there are some things that you ignore. Like you? I think the best thing to do is to begin at the beginning. I think that's begin you to begin. You both recall, do you not, that occasion years ago, five to be exact, when we held a convention on psychiatry in this city. I attended and gave a talk on the results of my studies related to the regression of a patient to a past life through the use of hypnosis. My theory was greeted with amazement and incredulity. I should have opened with a joke. Among others attending that day were you, Dr. Esther. Lloyd, the barber. And you, Dr. Diaz. Of course, you Tennessee Ernie Ford. Dr. Krupp. And the evil judge Our Robert Bork. was made the subject of ridicule. And I left the convention bitter and defeated. Same as always. I got to the house feeling unsure of these ideas. I'd been squelched. But I just couldn't accept the other opinions of my theory. You've been squelched, Joel. I was sure they could be proven. That night, Flora offered to undergo a hypnotic test. She became she fond of my little house plan. The experiment. Hey, it's Betsy Ross you got. Assisted by her father and In a by cameo. Pete, I hypnotized her. During her past life, Flora had lived among the great peoples of the Aztec. She told us such strange things, amazing things. Naughty things. Far back in those ancient years, her name had been Xochitl. She was deeply in love with a brave and high-born warrior called Popoca. Their they had a so mad posh for hats. To reason. So they decided to run away, even though it was her sacred duty to preserve her maidenhood and be sacrificed to the god Tecatlicopa. The god of decaffeinated they were coffee. by the tribal priests. They prepared hearty soups and broths and forced them on their guests, for they truly knew how to handle a hungry man. This is uh, chicken noodle soup that I let steep all day in the sun, it, like uh, sun tea. Better than borscht yep. for your good health. See, Mommy's drinking it. Mmm, num, 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 num. Open up. Here's the steam shovel. Hot, hot. That's like a hot steam shovel. Get you going in the morning. As punishment, the warrior was buried alive, and an eternal curse was placed upon him. Then things got bad. And then Zamfir, master of the patent flute, played. But that didn't last long. As part of her punishment, she was submitted to the dreaded binocular joke. Then Ethel Merman opened with a song. Oh, this is horrible. Kind of like fingers on a chalkboard. the chrome off my body. Mazola con goodness. Hey, it's a Peruvian all-state representative. He's stoned. <laughs> the ceremony lasted well into the night. What a party. I've got rhythm in my diodes. 
Let's see. Now, what can we do with her hair? Well, we could give her a swing and bob, or... Oh, she's scheduled to die. Just give her a blow dry and a rinse. It doesn't seem fair that they tease her hair right before she's killed. Teasing's always bad. This has got to be one of the most boring rides at Disneyland. You realize that, you guys? Aztecs of the Caribbean? How low will she go? Then she was bent at the waist. Hey, watch your hand, buddy. Kind of looks like dirty dancing, doesn't it? I've reached the end of my life And I'm waiting for the knife to fall Man, look, it's the Jets. What's he saying? He's saying, live fast, die young, and leave a good-looking corpse. That was years before James Dean even existed. She was adorned with the bracelet and the breastplate, which were engraved with hieroglyphics, indicating where the Aztec treasure was hidden. Then they cut out her heart, but as she began to regain consciousness, in the exact moment I came to the end of my little experiment, she struggled and began to shout. Before I had it terrible attack of some kind, and her blood pressure dropped to such an extent that we were afraid she might die. But a couple of weeks later, we discovered that Dr. Krupp, a man who had suddenly become a dangerous criminal in the underworld, had been there spying during my experiment. The experiment had been a complete success, but since we realized that no one would believe us unless we could come up with absolute proof, we decided, we decided to search, search in the basement. The plate, I couldn't wait to show them my bumper pool table. Flora and my guide. fine selection of jams and jellies and composts that I had laid up. Flora, our guide, was tied to my waist so we wouldn't be separated. Why Floyd brought the beaver, I don't know. Oh my, there's a light. We're thinking of expanding this whole thing. Making a rumpus room. For our rumpus. And speaking of rumpuses, there's Flora. Right foot, left foot, right, left, right. Ah. We'll have this blocking down in no time. Suddenly, there it was. My six-sided bumper pool table. I think a swag lamp here and a beaded curtain would really brighten the place up. Once a jolly swag lamp waited by the billabong. There was Doe denying it. We were walking in a circle. Professor, I think we're up against a dead end. It can't be possible. The Aztecs wouldn't build a secret passageway just to have it end up for no rhyme or reason. Not the kind of Aztecs you're used to dealing with. It's a cul-de-sac. Professor, it sounds hollow. Well, stop knocking on my head. But it's so thick that it's senseless to try to break through. My head? Or the wall? I'll push. Pink Kate, hand me a hand, please. Not that hand, your clean hand. Oh, that was your clean hand. Help if you grunt. Flora, come on. We jarred it open. Go ahead, Beave. It's the same set we were on before.
It's the Phantom of the Opera. Ouch! This must be a little room beneath the pyramid. Yes. Good. But I know it isn't the temple. Look what I found! Come here! A laundry chute. What is it? It looks like a well. Well, I think it's an air shaft, but undoubtedly it will lead us somewhere. Probably to the temple. Maybe the air. Well then, what are we waiting for? No doubt it will advance the plot. Come on. Thin as it is. Women, children first. I'll stand here and hold the flashlight. Remarkable. It was the neighbor's basement. Once again, I could use their VHS without them knowing. We shoved everybody through the little hole. After descending several flights of stairs, we suddenly encountered the hair-raising face of the god Ticatlicopa. We had reached the lower temple and the Aztec tomb that Flora had mentioned. And the lighting was good. We could shoot a scene here. Lights, please. And there we came across the skeleton of what had once been Zochi. Buffalo chicken wings. Solid gold breastplate. Fachi, this is horrible to think I was she. But you're you now. You know, we're the first persons to break in here. The other people use the door. It's a world that slumbered all these years and begins to awaken now. We've found what we wanted so badly. The sump pump. No, Edward, don't do it. Do it, Edward, do it! There's a Tootsie Pop still in his mouth. It it's really Kojak. Last a long time. The head should really screw right off. This'll look swell in my office. Now at last, I'll be able to demonstrate this to my colleagues and prove my theory. It's simply amazing. Simply. Just a few days after I got the breastplate, I asked you all here, including Dr. Krupp, as you'll recall. Certainly. I'd say that it was the greatest experience of my life. And mine, too. Me, too. You must also recall that I'll I said that I'd that. study the breastplate and that I'd try to decipher Failed. the hieroglyphics and see what they meant since I knew that the message would tell how to find that hidden treasure. Yes, but I remember your telling us that you also needed the bracelet. Exactly, Doctor. One object complemented the other. They're Without ensemble. the bracelet, it was simply impossible to decipher the code. So I decided to go back for it, in spite of the Aztec curse that surrounded it. He who defiles the tomb of the Aztecs and finds the sacred plate will run the risk of death in his family as well, until the breastplate is replaced and get big buck teeth. What is he, Rod McEwen? Lights. My good friend, Dr. Pinkett. So once again, the three of us got together and returned to the two. This time loaded out of our minds. When we reached there, and I was just about to pick up the bracelet, my father-in-law stumbled on something and called my attention to it. Ow. Look here. I stumbled on something. It's my foot. It's attached to the bottom of my ankle. Boy, were we drunk. It's an Aztec IUD. Look there, doesn't that grave belong to Popoca? Yes, according to the legend, it does. In that case, where is he now? It was Scatman Crothers. Hey, this one says flush twice. The cafeteria is a long way off. What? What's that? Guys. I hey. thought you said we were the first ones here. Hey, zip them up, man. Someone's coming. We heard a strange shuffling noise. And was my shadow. And then out of the darkness appeared the ghastly and terrifying Popoca. The Aztec warrior had come back to life. 
come back to life to retrieve the objects that had been left in his care for eternity. <coughs> Parrot boy. I am not an animal. I am an Aztec mummy. Turn them off again. Lights again. It's a floor show. It's a lovely singing voice. This guy's got a big career in showbiz. That really hurt. Well, juggling's not in his routine. Uh, guys, help me. He's giving me a Snuggie. Professor, help me. Whoa, pull me faster. A triple wedgie from a mummy. Lights. To be perfectly frank, I thought my time had come. If it hadn't been for my friends, I'd have been torn to pieces. It's incredible. A mummy comes back to life after hundreds of years in a sepulcher. Dr. Diaz, you have my word of honor that the story I have been telling is the truth. Okay, mix with a little fiction. Popolka, okay, I'm lying as my I butt told off. You, was punished because he loved young Zochi. His curse was to guard the priceless bracelet as well as the golden breastplate. To do so for all eternity. Or a hundred thousand miles, Under whatever came first. Curse, his poor soul would never find repose. Continue, Edward. Well, the bat on many occasions oh, pick me up. I'm stuck. Let's go. Time passed rapidly. Need to mop in here. Right. I thought the whole business had been forgotten. But I found that the Aztec curse still followed us. One night, the mummy came to this house to get his treasure pieces. And he kidnapped Flora. Oh, man, I don't think I can handle the sound of those dogs barking anymore. At least the theater's soundproof. Too bad. They might drown out the sound of that big dog on a film. What is it, Tom Servo? I think, yeah, Joe, I think uh, one of those uh, demon dogs is doing the shave and a haircut knock at the back door. What? What is it, fella? <laughs> I think he's trying to tell us something. <laughs> Dad? <laughs> he's trapped? <laughs> Under a rock? <laughs> Down in Dead Rock Canyon? Stop patronizing me, you, and open this door. Don't let him in. Hey, come on in here. Up, up, come on up, come on up. Oh, oh, not on the furniture. That's not good. I am Enoch. King and charismatic leader of the dog people. Art, art. Cute. We have traveled many parsecs to pray to the giant bone and just maybe get a taste. Giant dog bone? Yes, but we did not know the bone would be inhabited. Hmm. Joel, I think the bone they're talking about is our ship. Hey, Kamba, put the schematic drawing of the satellite of love, the 2525, up on screen. I think it's under 2525 in your file. It looks exactly like a giant dog bone. Not just any bone, but the sacred nylon chew toy written up by the holy Rudd Weatherwat, Rudd Weatherman, Joan Ambry. Our intention was to bury you on the far side of the moon, but now we'll have to change our plans. Wow. Well, listen, you got to get your followers off our ship. There's so many of them, and they're multiplying at such an alarming rate that we're going to go into the Earth's atmosphere and explode. Yeah, and then you'll be hot dogs. <laughs> hey, come hey, on, watch Crow. It, watch it. Come on, he's Not to be a problem. At my signal, the dogs will leave. But they will obey me and only me. First, let us exchange pleasantries. Then, we will drink Tranya. From a dish on the floor, boy? No, huh? no, no, no hey, stop hey, hey, it. Hey. Listen, <laughs> he hasn't even met everybody. You probably all, well, except for Tom Servo, right? Ah, the attractive one. Hey, watch it, pal. You're looking at 100% prime cut American robotic male. And I don't party with puppies. I'm out of here. Oh. Well, my name is Joel, and I'm from the planet Earth. And where I come from, dogs are man's best friend. You're kidding. Yeah, it's true. And uh, you met uh, Crow over here. Shake, boy. Shake. Hey, I don't like that bird one. Hey. Hey, sit. But now Deal. I'll explain how to rid your ship of the dogs. Oh, wait a minute. You haven't met Gypsy yet. This is Gypsy. Ow, 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 hey. ow, ow. Gypsy, no. Gypsy, no. Come on. Oh. Hey. Oh, no. We're kibble. Way to go, girl. Move inside. Oh, on.
tied her to the sacrificial on, stone where the skeleton of Zochi had lain for centuries. Tie a sleeping floor around the altar stone. Hey. Obviously, the mummy intended to make history repeat itself. He was going to cut out Flora's heart and offer it to the god to cut Likopa. The three of us rushed to the pyramid to try to rescue Flora. And we stood transfixed for a moment at the scene we saw. The mummy was standing next to the stone. He was holding a knife high in his right hand. I jumped to the floor and luckily was able to hit the blade with a bullet. Duh. It lunged at me and its enormous hands got hold of my throat. Life was leaving me rapidly when Flora's father suddenly held a cross up in front of its face. Which was odd because he was Jewish. To hold the mummy at bay while we freed Flora. In a frenzy, we untied her and got her away from the stone. And then the professor ordered us to get her out of the pyramid. Get out of the pyramid. His tone was so adamant and I was so concerned for Flora's safety that we obeyed him blindly. But when we got out, I realized that he hadn't followed us. And Boy, I decided Doug, to go back thank for God. Oh. What about Opie? In that very instant, a tremendous explosion oh, shook the pyramid. Yes. Oh, explosion. Yes. The professor had given up his life in order to save ours. And his career. Since the mummy had stayed under tons of boulders and the bat had been sent to prison. Of course, we bat? thought the whole business had come to an end. But it didn't happen that way. Who's the bat? The bat, who is really the infamous Dr. Krupp. Oh. He broke out of jail. In his mad determination to get my treasure, he kidnapped my daughter and Flora and then hypnotized her. Do tell us the rest, my friend. Then what happened? In this state, she took the doctor to the Aztec tomb. He immediately located the mummy, taking the breastplate and the bracelet. Well, Krupp called me on the phone not too much later. I was ordered to go there and decipher the hieroglyphics to enable the demon to locate the treasure. And you agreed? Can't you see that I had to obey? To save my wife who had been kidnapped by the doctor and my little oh, girl. But there's another thing that you should know. He needed It'll the Aztec treasure for a spot on his wall in the rec room. He needed that Aztec treasure to work on an experiment. He also said that the experiment, of course, was costly. Now you know how I was forced to do it. I went to Krupp's laboratory and began to decipher the hieroglyphics. Tens of those criminals, lives were in grave danger. Our only hope was that the mummy, guided by unknown forces, would be able to find Dr. Krupp's hideout just the way he'd found my house on a previous occasion. He could call information. I dragged the thing out as much as possible, but the moment arrived when I could stall no longer. I finished it. That's fine. Let's see here. We the, the people of... Hey, please. this'll never work. Eh? Oh, yes. You know what to do now, don't you, Bruno? Start a victory garden? Have a bake sale? Support Radio Free Europe? Collect shiny things? Buy bonds where you work or bank? Get a gun? Get a gun, that's a good thing. He always resorts to violence. Just what are you going to do? Murderous? What do you no, think? I'm going to kill you. You unscrupulous pig! Mommy's home, now you're gonna get it. Oh, it spawns right off. I'll go right through. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, keep shooting, Bruno. It's gonna work, really. Beautiful. Oops. Right where it hurts. On the floor. He's wearing a smoking jacket, you guys. I'm out. Whoa. There's some furniture you missed. I saved the beaver. I saved Flora. Look out. Come on, Beaver, let's go check this out. They seem stunned. No! Doctor, help me! Can't you hear? No! Help me! Yeah, you're first on our list of people to help. Please help me! Help me! We realized who the criminals were and settled accounts with them. 
Then when he saw the doctor trying to escape, he picked him up like a rag doll and threw him into a pit full of rattlers. Every good laboratory has a pit full of rattlers. That's Would that be a bad touch? Yeah, I think so. We were tired, but it was a good kind of tired. Mommy's done cleaning. Afterwards, with the breastplate and the bracelet in his hand, he slowly shuffled away into the darkness and soon was lost from sight. I'll never forget the strong affection I had for Flora's father. Such a kind man whose intelligent advice brought about our salvation. And the mummy went back to the pyramid? No, he had two no. nights at the Copa. The explosive destroyed his temple. He had no reason to go there. In that case, can't you tell us where he is? Permit me to continue. Hey, it's your All movie. All these tragic happenings couldn't go unattended. So I went to the police and they heard the whole story. Then I returned to Krupp's hideout, accompanied by the chief of police and a couple of his men. You can imagine our surprise when we discovered the place was completely empty. Except for all this garbage. The laboratory had been dismantled, and the bodies of the criminals that the mummy had killed had also disappeared. They were dismantled as well. Continuing our search, we hurried to the snake pit. I was awestruck when I realized that the body of Dr. Krupp was no longer down there. Oh. And to our horror, we discovered that there was a small door in the back wall of the pit through which the doctor could have escaped. But he was such a large man. How could he? Obviously, the doctor had escaped. And strangely, I don't think he'd been bitten. The man's running loose. So that would mean that the doctor kept trying to come by those articles so that he could locate the treasure. You're right, my friend. He did just that. He began to bother us a couple of weeks later. It happened quite suddenly, you see. One dark night. This is the house. Do you really think this plan of yours is going to work, Doc? You'll see. Now, I want you to be quiet. Keep still and don't make the slightest noise. Peas and carrots, peas and carrots, peas and carrots. I wish that you come to my side. Flora, I command you to come to me. I think he's using Teleflora. Flora. I command you to come to me. Use the doorbell. Doorknob. Flora, are you listening? Come here to me. Is he speaking into his glove? It must be a party line. Nine seven six Flora. Stand up. Wear something sheer. Put on a house coat. Do not try to fight it. Come here. Notice you never actually see her get dressed. Open the door this time. Don't walk through it. Good girl. Well done. That'll save some repair work. Hey, close it all the way. Uh, Were you born in a barn? Do not try to fight it. Come here. Step, 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 kick, step, kick. Right, left, right, left. Okay, it's all flat from here, Flora. Oh. She's not following Flora, no. She's no pushover. <coughs> Loud clock and kettle drum. Flora, are you listening? I command you to come to me. I'm coming, I'm coming. Flora, you are to do as I command. Come here. Digging for gold, Bruno? <laughs> OK, Bruno, would you pass in front of the car? Honk really loud. Love me and my deformed friend. You can hear the waves that are being sent out by that mummy, can you not? And the guy I in the car. I well know that you're able to lead us to him. Yes, I can. Then tell us, where is Popoka? The beer barrel Popoka? In the ancient cemetery. Come with me. Is the ancient cemetery denominational?
Meanwhile, in the ancient cemetery, they were looking for the mummy. But first, let's kick over some gravestones. You know, <laughs> that would make another excellent miniature golf course, like the other movie. Each hole would be deadly. <laughs> that last step is a doozy. Low overhead. But grave consequences. Yikes. Sorry. I'll shut you off. Don't do it. Come on, Bruno, keep up, and stop picking your nose. Look, Peter Graves. <laughs> Who's buried in Peter's grave? James Arness. What are you doing here? Answer me! What are you doing here? We're hitting people. Come now, Flora. It must have been a disposable Come character, on, I think. Hurry. Shuffle, shuffle. Step, step, step. No need to hurry. The plot will support all of this sort Lions of slowness. And tigers and bears, oh, oh my. my. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Lions and tigers. See, this will be our new home. You'll see there'll be you and me and Bruno makes three. And my little deformed friend. Not twice. Tell him Sam sent you. Shh. Trying to wake the dead? It's open. At least carry her across the threshold. Sure, I'm glad Flora wore her phosphorescent dress. Don't you know that's the curse of the money crow, mummy crow? Curse of the mummy? Yeah. It's being, not being able to dress when you rob a grave. That's I'd it, hate right. that. I've had this dream before. I'm in my pajamas. I'm in a crypt. I'm being chased by a big banana. Oh, man. His face looks like cottage cheese. It looks like a diet plate. You devil. You stinking devil. How oh, I'd like to chop your rotten flesh to pieces. Bruno, stop letting hate yeah, run your life. Great to do so. Who's he's hiding his face it's not from? Possible now. Uh, his agent, I think. Going to make my experiment. So we must wait. 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 When I got so much hate eating down deep inside of my guts, you ain't got no idea what it is to live like oh, this. Oh, man, look, they tape plastic puke to his face. Just because of that stinking monster. Your face goes a three-day rain, Bruno. I promise you that he'll be destroyed. <laughs> but give me time. Just a little time. It won't be too long before you can have your revenge. Let me get the breastplate first, the bracelet. Looks like it's scabbed over and nicely. Them. And yet so far, because I can't touch them. It's too dangerous to do it. You wake up in an instant and destroy us. Sounds okay to me. But I'll get them back. I swear it. No matter how long it takes me. You devilish mummy. He looks like Mr. French. Line? Come on, we better go now. We'll be needing a lot of time if the plan I have is going to work out. Anything you say. Cannon will be used against you. Come, Flora. Wow, a lot of good acting in that scene. Joel, what was the point of this little, uh, little scene here? I don't know. I think they were just staking out a location to come and shoot here later when they had something meaningful to do. Oh. You know, I really dig you, hon. Can I call you again? Think you'll kiss her now or wait till he gets to the door? It's always better policy to kiss on the steps. Uh, or by the car. 
Or under now the car. Or on the mouth. Ew. You go up to your room, and you go to sleep. And when you awaken, you act quite normally. You will be and you refreshed and invigorated. Do you understand? You won't recall a thing. Now walk. Like an Egyptian. Go on. Bruno, do that thing with the car horn again. I love that bit. <laughs> she falls for it every time. Done this scene before, only at night. I feel pretty. Well, oh, good so morning. Pretty. Good morning, sweetheart. You must have been very tired. We were waiting down here to have breakfast with you. We could both eat a horse. Bacon and eggs, like always. Nothing for me, Maria. I have a terrible headache, dear. What's that you've got on your gown? It's all dirty. Looks like That's dead, dried funny. flesh. You've been down in the cellar. No, sweetheart. I don't know. But look at your slippers. They're all muddy. And you pitted out your gown. Oh, come on. What have you been up to? Just cavorting with mummies all night. It's funny. These are new slippers. I just bought them. And now they're dirty. And so are Why you. you went out last night. No. After I took my bath, I went to bed because I was tired. Yes, but you got up later on, didn't you? I did. <laughs> Who's the kid? No. Yes, because I woke up a couple of times and you were not in bed. No, you're mistaken, darling. I assure you, Get I didn't even out of there. Second. You went out last night, honest, Mom. Come on, let's forget the whole thing for now, all right? Floyd looks confused. Remember, she has a great imagination. Tell me, has your headache passed? No. I'm going to lie down for a while. Excuse me, please. And I don't like the smell of this conversation. You children go out and have your breakfast. Yes, Daddy. Come on, Piquette, I want to talk to you. Oh, boy, what a liar you are. You shut your big mouth. You're the liar. You can't even act yourself out of a paper bag. You'll never work in Coral Gables I again. Can't. I'm very worried. This attitude that we've observed in Flora is not normal. What's more, I'm afraid that the bat has something to do with this. Maybe she should choke really up on it a little bit. was telling the truth about it? And that her mother got up and went out? Yes. It's quite probable. But Flora insisted she didn't leave her bed for a second. Because she can't recall anything. When she got up last night, she was sleeping. I don't understand it. It seems impossible. I'll tell you what I think. She was hypnotized and could be under post-hypnotic suggestion. So it seems to me that the bat controls her from a distance. With what sonar. It? It's logical. What a sleuth. This strange attitude with Flora indicated that unscrupulous villain Krupp made her leave the house during the night. But where did they go to? Can't you guess what he's trying to do? No. You certainly know what he's after, the breastplate. And besides that, the bracelet. And the snappy Coco Chanel pants suit. Then you think that she was made to go along with Krupp, and he wanted her to guide him to find the mummy. Exactly, and you and I must go there. I'm going to find out if that scoundrel stole those objects. But that'll be difficult. You can't investigate without any clues. Floyd's a great barber, but not a very good detective. Yes. Neither of them are very good actors. Well, that goes without saying. He, smoke, he smokes very well, though. If Listen, loving you is second. wrong, I don't want to be right. Suppose we took her slippers to the laboratory to have that mud analyzed. That could help us, don't you think? I can tell you what kind of slippers yes. they are. Yes, that might just be the solution. We'll take them, but I don't think she should find out. We'd better do it all in secret. Yeah. Secret. We'll get in disguise. We'll be women. Yes, now I'm quite sure. It's embedded in the dirt. They're slippers. Of course, it's a small quantity, Doctor, but your suspicions are correct. They're pieces of marble. You're sure it's marble? Marble? Can you identify its source? Is it Cat's special eye. kind? No, it isn't, but it's a fine quality. Classy. It might be a Carrar marble. I can say that. Maybe a period. It's used in the construction of mausoleums, as far as I know. Oh. Thank you. She went out late at night and played marbles. What could it mean? <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the other set. Fortunately, it was still lit. 
This is the last cemetery. We've seen all the others. If we don't find anything here, we'd better forget about it. Hello there! Good well evening. Acted, Floyd. Tell me, are you the watchman here? Yes, sir. Anything I can do for you? Oh, yes. We'd like to ask you a few questions. We'd like to know if you've seen anything strange the last few weeks or more recently. Anything very suspicious in or around the cemetery pertaining to one of the graves. Just the film crew. Are you from the police? Yes, that's right, my friend. And we're after a very dangerous criminal whom we suspect has been hiding in one of the cemeteries around the city. Well, the fact is, something pretty doggone curious did happen. Just two nights ago, I was surprised to run into a young woman here wearing a kind of white robe. She seemed to be asleep, and two men entered the grounds with her. He's not going to flashback, is he? Were, one of the guys slugged me, and they left me out cold here How on the ground. I think I got this swell hat. Then we'll be taking a look around the grounds. You can do anything you want. Anything you want. You're the police. Don't touch him, he's filthy. You see, I was right. At last, we're on the trail. Now the tough part is you have to around my foot. Because we've got to walk around till we find the mummy. Look, we'd better separate now. Go that way, Pink Kate. Mm. I'll go over separate? there. Separate? But I go love on. you. Ow. Team. Don't li Wow, uh -oh. wow. Hey. Oh, scared and mummy and wow. Oh, very bad. Oh, oh, Dino. Oh, oh, oh. Lions and tigers oh, and wolves. Oh, oh, oh. Scared and tree and wolf. Mrs. Mormon shots. Oh, Dino. Hey. Oh, oh, beware all who enter. Whoa. Ham. Oh, Dean. Dean, oh. Where are you? Wow. Hey, Jerry. Jerry, where are you? I can't find you. Come on, Jerry, where are you? Come on. Say something to me, boy. Dean, over here. Oh, there you are. Quit pausing around. Edward. We got a mummy to find. Edward. Come here. What happened? Get I'm getting out of here. Wow, Joel. Hope those dogs aren't around. Come on. I just don't see it at all, guys. Come on, Crow, I think it'll work. You're the only one of us who even looks a little bit like Enoch did. I, no, my brow's all different. I'm, I'm just, no. Oh, it's there, I see it. Hey, uh, Joe, be sure to wet down his nose. Uh, boy, if I were a demon dog, I'd just uh, bow down and kneel and bow to you. I'm already starting to miss that old Enoch. You know, I almost cried when he left, just like when old Yeller got shot. Oh, Crow, come on, it'll be easy. You go out there, you say to the demon dogs, come on, everybody, let's go. I'll be right behind you. He ducks back in, it's easy. Great advice coming from Mr. Fireplug. Hey, hey. it's easy, you two, listen. If worse comes to worse, just tell them the satellite of love is a giant chicken bone. Okay? You look great. Now just go do the job and be regal. All right. Be I right. look like Charlie McCarthy. Let's watch on the monitor. All right. Quiet down. Quiet down. <clears throat> I am Enoch. I am your lord and charismatic leader, remember? And, uh, hey, what's the least flaw here? Hey! Oh, he's oh, getting it. Hey, oh. hey, curb your buddy over there. Oh! Oh! <laughs> kind of a warm feeling, eh, Crow? <laughs> well, I think it went kind of well, you know. Uh, they were eaten out of the palm of my hand till I ran out of treats. And speaking of treats, we'll be right back. They're in the crypt. Demon dogs everywhere. What to do? It's scaring me. You got all that stuff off you, Crow? Yes, I did. 
great idea. Look, the breastplate and the bracelet. They didn't take it. All this I've just told you occurred almost five years ago. We visited the crypt from time to time to take a look at the mummy with its breastplate and its bracelet, too. And the snappy Coco the Chanel pants. You know, he disappeared from sight. Then, just a couple of days ago, we read an article that is very interesting. We were profoundly surprised by it. According to the article, a couple of nights before, a cadaver had been robbed from the amphitheater. Robber cadaver? And the individual who did it was the bat, of course. Yes. In the beginning, we had some doubts since the man who had been attacked couldn't offer us a description of his assailants. But later on, our suspicions were confirmed. Don't play with that. Yesterday, there was a burglary in the Radiology Institute. The thieves took a machine that uses radium. They also stole a brain out of a laboratory. Excellent. This time, the police were able to identify the crooks as the bat and all his band. We're covering a plot hole with fact, asphalt here. Captured. Are there any good clues, Doctor? Lead is the only metal capable of resisting radiation. Lead material in this city is handled by many wholesalers. After visiting the first three or four, they got to the right one. Good morning, sir. Good morning. What can I do for you, gentlemen? We're sorry to be a bother to you, but is it just possible that lately you sent out a large shipment of lead? Could you give me that information? In the last two days? Or it could be a week, more or less. Well, let me Five check. Five years, maybe. We keep a record of our shipments in this book. Why, yes, we sent a lead balloon to the writers of this film. Yes, here it is. Exactly five days ago, we made delivery of 20 plates of lead shielding four inches in width to number 22 Shade Street. To a man called uh, the Bat. Many thanks. You're welcome. I can't believe he told us. We were investigating for days. At last, we got the address. I think the Bat had made his hideout there or his laboratory. Or his nest. Well, I don't see why this thieving Dr. Krupp would go to the effort of stealing radium. A complete human brain and also the body of some man. He's nuts. Do you recall that the bat once told Flora that he was working on a new experiment? Mm-hmm. I think that is the explanation. Oh. It's possible. But there's no doubt that Dr. Krupp and his criminals are planning to cause trouble. That's Certainly, what that's criminals do best. Now I'll tell you why I called you here tonight, gentlemen. Because you both are scientists. And, and we like boring to stuff. The situation. Just in case we end up being murdered. You mean to say you two are thinking of going there without taking the police along? Yes, because you see, we're still not sure that that's the Bat's laboratory. And the police still don't have much faith in us because of what happened before. They just need to check for Bat droppings. For a... Guano? In case we're not back here at the house by three in the morning, I'm leaving it up to you to call the police. Sell Edward. everything. Let's hey, kiss. watch it, watch it. Lights. Looks painful. Betty Crocker test kitchens. Let's see. One, two, three. Okay, it forms three creamy layers. No, wait. Three layers. A creamy layer, a gelatinous layer, and... Damn it, I must find that formula! <sighs> Pop rocks seem to be moving along nicely. Those uh, M&Ms are almost done. Oh my God, he's torn apart the Michelin Man. Bip, buddy, it's us. Pull yourself together. Oh, how horrible! He even slashed his spare. Freeze you two. This looks like it was shot with the security camera. Oh, it's crater face. Doctor Armada. What a pleasant surprise. Bruno? No, Kitty Carlisle. Who do you think it is? A souvenir of the mummy. The boss is going to be very happy to say hello to you two again. Come along. This is the kind of film you won't put on pause when you leave the room. It encourages you to go to get a sandwich. Boss! Kind of like TV repellent. Look what I found out in front. Dr. Amada and his shadow. This is a pleasant surprise, gentlemen. After I'm such not a, long a shadow. Time, I come face to face with such good friends. Exactly where did you find them? Out in the shop there, looking around. I offer you my congratulations because you are magnificent detectives. 
Did anyone else come with them? Nobody else. I saw them when they drew up in the automobile, alone. Bruno, aren't you going to attend our guests? You the way they deserve? Go fetch chairs for the gentlemen. Sure, right away. The electric yeah. chairs. Why? Tell me, how's your beautiful and charming wife, Dr. Amada? I learned about your marriage, and I admit it's a bit late to say it, but receive my congratulations. And take this toaster and fondue uh, set as a gift. How are you these days? Are you still the champion of rights? There's no doubt about it, and I'm glad. No, I'm just a shadow. Come Jerk. over here. Start the music. They're playing musical chairs. How horrible. Next, they'll be pinning the tail on something. Who, Who would have thought? thought that you'd be here at the moment to witness this? Because you're about to see something that will astonish you. Truly unbelievable. <laughs> When you feast your eyes on this, I don't doubt that you'll be amazed, Doctor. And you'll be the first to congratulate me. But it's a Frankly, robot. I'm happy that you came Quiet here to visit building. us, Dr. Amato. Oh, sorry. You're a man who is basically an intellectual, and that's why you'll be able to understand. But you heard inside. You're basically an overeater. I think you remember that time we met. Since then, I've worked day and night without resting for a minute. And during all of that hectic time, I explored powers that no one else knows. All those great mysteries, the very basis of creation. Then that means that you defy all the limits that were put down by God. Mm, maybe. There are certain secrets that we could explore and discover rapidly. I'm just toying with God's law. And that's law. why it's such a shame that fear impedes us so, Dr. Amada. You're completely mad and ignorant also. Thank oh. you. Every mad scientist has one of these speeches. Don't you respect research at all? Don't you want to learn to know why a body functions? I do. And at last I found the cause. Take a look at this heart that's beating. It lives. It lives and pulsates because I gave it life. And if I can give life... Doesn't have very good rhythm, tail, though. Why can't I give it to the bodies that are damned to death? And then decay? why can't you give it to the script? No one can possibly imagine how I work. When I dug in the mud with these hands and entered tombs, I tortured many animals with okay. pleasure to find the answers. Remember the unfortunate push me, pull you. You're insane, do you know? Yes. I decided to create a man, a breathing body, a real man. And I have made that dream come true. There you have the greatest yeah. creation of man's intelligence. Cool. A human robot doctor. Tonight I'm going to find out. Tonight I'm going to put it to the supreme test. The Cosmo Sex Quiz? I'll activate the creature. But this is monstrous, Doctor. If it lives, then my triumph will be complete, Dr. Amara. Because I'll get the treasure, and I'll be rich. Shut up. This thing I created has enormous power. And you'll watch it. Now then, life for the robot. The only thing diabolical about this guy is his acting. Doctor, watch this! That would make a really excellent miniature golf course. What's Do I detect a theme? I just, I don't know what I'm Robot, seeing. yay! I'm just seeing miniature golf courses. Cool. Who's got good. the line? Mine, please. Don't you think it would be better? Robot? Scarface? Lightbulb? Floyd? Robot? Doctor? Good shot of me? Do you have any jumper cables in your car or something? It's not working. Two thirty already. Don't you think it would be better to call the police now? I don't know what to do. No. Let's you just all pick up the phone and dial. And respect the doctor's wishes. Suppose they're in danger. Another good shot of me. Good shot of the robot. Nobody's moving. I, I think that's a different Bad emotion, though. The table's moving. The table's a better actor than anyone. 
They're all made out of the same material, wood. Somebody move. Laugh or something. Squeeze it out. Come on, Floyd. Bruno? Robot? Robot? Chain, chain, chain. He's so powerful. <laughs> you think that's funny? Oh, this is great, Doctor! The greatest invention! <laughs> Since your coffee maker. It's not so great, it doesn't have knees. You can see it standing there. You can see it standing there. You can see it standing there. A marvelous machine, a tribute to the great intelligence of man. A human robot. With this shining creature, no human being on this earth can oppose me. Do Wait, a human robot? There's a flaw right there. Do you know what could have happened to Only you right now? Only bits of it are human. Had I not diminished the electric force, the current that makes him move, and that is contained in this apparatus? With the slightest twist Floyd is style, stunned. You two would have been converted into atomic dust instantaneously. Because the robot utilizes radium and has sufficient power to disintegrate anything in the world. To rise, it meets the mummy. Bruno. Prepare the special plates. The lead will shoot my truck. Bring the good Current china. Time is flying. Tonight, my robot has to make a visit, you know, in a certain cemetery. Rapid oil what change. Time? Ten minutes to three. I told you there's no time to lose, Bruno. We have a commercial. Hurry, get Bruno. Going. <laughs> I want the police. It's urgent. <laughs> Headquarters, I want to talk to the chief of police. <laughs> Three o'clock and all's hell. I want you to hell. stop and think about this. A new kind of world. An army of robots obeying me. Hey, look, we got the point, but this is great. We gotta go, a okay? Species. Sheep obeying my orders. A new theory that man has not dared imagine. That would make you a shepherd. I'll make some more. Maybe a thousand. Now that I know how, the rest is easy. Oh, you're, you're too low. Go money. a million. The treasure of the Aztecs. That's why tonight the mummy will give me what I want. Corn? Yes. This it's guy snapped a twig. Fine. You I think the whole branch came down. And guard our distinguished friends. They mustn't get away. They're an extremely important cog in my plan. Great. First I'm a shadow, I'm now I'm a I cog. Can't take you along, but you'd only get underfoot. But I'll return. Lloyd's got to take medicine every two hours. Can he go? That I could destroy the mummy. And with the gold breastplate and bracelet in my hands, you'll begin once more to translate the hieroglyphics. Jesus, he long-winded. <laughs> this time you're helpless because no one knows you're here. Shut up. Dr. Amada. <laughs> oh, Time for Bruno's brother. electrolysis. What's he gonna do? Uh, He's gonna pat his part. Dick York as the mummy. No, that's the robot. Oh, the robot. Sorry, and it might, I think it might be Dick Sargent anyway. I'm Milton, your brand new son. Put your right foot in, you put your right foot out. You do the roby pokey and you turn yourself about. Your head is filled with electrodes. It makes you want to shout. And that's what it's all about. Hey! Right foot in. I don't have any feet, Joel. Oh. The fun's over. Oh, we're to the new place. Oh. Let's hurry. I'm afraid for their lives. You're afraid for your lives. I'm afraid for your career. You call that a career? You know, I can't help but think that that robot would be excellent on a miniature golf course. 
Stop it. It looks like a coffee maker. Krupp's coffee maker. Oh, hmm? no. Sorry. There you go. This is for Andy. Can you do your uh, Floyd voice? Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh, the robot's very. All right, funny. Floyd, Floyd. Hey, cut it out. That's for MP. That's for Opie. That's for Goober. Oh, oh where, where are my glasses? glasses? Where are my glasses? Where are my glasses? They're on your face. Oh, there, there they are. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Great comic actor. Poor Bip from Michelin Man. What happened here? Chief, you can arrest those two men there in the other room. Come on. Doctor, the bat has gone to the tomb where the mummy is. Let's hurry. There's no time to lose. What's that? A man made out of tin. Oh, yes. Hey guys, guess who's history in this scene? Juan Valdez. Bingo. Yeah. Use the robot. I'll myrtleize him. Let's see, I'll put this on broil. It's a decoy. <laughs> Must have been a smoking jacket. Well, immolation is the sincerest form of flattery. I read that in a book. Hurry, Bruno! Take the breastplate and bracelet off of him. Yes. Well, I think we're about to see the namesake of this movie. At last I'm gonna have the my robot revenge. versus the mummy. I'm in for 20 on the robot. I don't know, that mummy's got a real nice speed. Amazing snake-like accuracy, too. And he does a hell of a soft shoe, too. He's the Aztec of a thousand and one holds. This scene is closed caption for the speed impaired. He moves like George Burns. He'll put you in the sleeper hold. He just breathes on you. This whole movie's a sleeper hold. Take two of these and a glass of water and you'll sleep like a baby. I couldn't take two of these. This one feels like a suppository. Let's kiss. It's like professional wrestling in slow motion. It's like professional acting in slow motion, too. You know, what if that uh, the bat was trying to, to fool everybody and he's just got a guy in that suit? It's not really a robot at all. That couldn't happen. Makes you think, though. I don't know, once that robot gets into gear, you're really going to see him kick some Aztec. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's something he hadn't counted on. All mummies carry pliers. He didn't put up much of a fight at all. Oh, mummy, hold me. I think it's really the, uh, the human part of him that's failing. Well, the human side likes the rich taste, but the robot in him loves the frosty goodness. Whoa, this isn't a cereal, is it? Oh yeah, the other one was a cereal. Oh, hold me. Cho? Right in the Adam's apple. I looked up anticlimax in the dictionary and it said see Aztec mummy. The constipation. Oh, that looks real. Yeah, I, I think that's real. I didn't know Billy Barty was in this. He's got a small part. 
Ah! Those two had to die. Thank God Flora's here. Papoka, in memory of the great love that once existed between us, oh, huh. stop all this death and Before destruction. Before your skin went Take bad. Take these objects that are yours to guard and go back to the grave of our ancestors. Hi. Where we should never have interrupted oh. your eternal and never darken sleep. this film again. Joel? Isn't that a d d d demon dog? Joel? Demon dog? Oh, yeah. oh, 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 feet. Oh, 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 Off the 33A. Hello? Attach him to that big disposal ball. It's shaped like a giant ball. We'll push it out the Bayport doors. Oh, Head I down there. You. Keep your fingers crossed if you got him. Okay, Cambot, put me on exterior. Put in fetch mode on my mark. Now. They're gone. <laughs> oh, uh, Joel, I don't want to be a killjoy, but doesn't fetch mean go get and bring back? Oh. 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 That's the end of our experiment. I hope you're happy. Oh, I'm happy. Are you happy? I'm happy. Good. File this. Well, until next time, my little square pudding.